So you'll have to excuse the mess of our basement, but down here we have um, our babies. We have our baby chickens in a pack and play. Well, we call it a peck and play. And um, so we found this on Craigslist for cheap. And um, for years it has served as a great place to put baby chickens in uh, for some brooding with a heat lamp hanging on top. I got a cover on it so that nobody can jump out and so that the curious cat can't find his way in. Normally I'll just keep them in this until they're big enough to move outdoors. But in a few days we're gonna get a phone call from Smithland Supply saying that they have 12 more babies for us. They're gonna be a day old. These guys are a few weeks old, maybe a month old. And so we need to get creative to make a spot to move these bigger girls into for the time being. I'm gonna do that over here on the floor. We'll clean this pack and play up, the peck and play up, if you will. Uh, we're gonna clean it up so that um, the new kids on the block can uh, start their lives growing up in the peck and play. Of course, we're gonna take all this bedding out. We're gonna put that in the compost. Um, I'll show that another day, what we're doing with our compost. We're very excited about that. Um, pretty, pretty weird to be excited about compost, but I guess this is what life has come to, living up in the hills. First time I've ever done this, but we have this big dog crate, big modular dog crate thing. And uh, never done this, I don't really know if this will work, but I'm gonna give it a go. I'm gonna do my best to turn this into a chicken fortress where hopefully these girls can live for several weeks. It's winter outside, it's early March. It is winter, we're getting a blizzard right now. We're planning on being snowed in. And here it comes. So anyway, long story short, these girls won't be moving into the coop outdoors for a long time. So we gotta make them feel comfy in here. Now we have a, a burden and a blessing. Our heat comes in from the wood boiler over here through these copper pipes. Then, ooh, oh, they are hot. And then um, they go through this heat exchanger right here and they circulate further through other copper pipes and then they go through our boiler um, and then it gets distributed to the different zones throughout the house. Now, this is, um, this is a pretty good system for us in one way and it's a really bad system in another way, but it's a good system for us because it gets really hot down here. It gets, I mean, today it's 30, maybe 28, 30 degrees outside. Down here it's about 80 degrees, which is great because it keeps our basement nice and warm. Um, it keeps it dry, and this is this is uh, where we'll where we hang a lot of our like like wet coats and stuff to dry. It dries really quickly down here, so it's great to have a nice dry, warm basement. We just keep the door upstairs open and let the heat waft up, and the floor upstairs it's not insulated, so the heat can kind of rise and do its thing. It's very comfortable for us. The bad thing is, is where are we going to have a root cellar? if it's 80 degrees in our basement. Hmm. We'll cross that bridge later. First we have to grow some roots and then we'll deal with that. But today, let's figure out this, this chicken brooder situation. So keeping chickens inside the house, not the smartest idea. We're just kind of making do with what we've got and um, that's why I'm building this brooder in the basement. In a perfect world, when these chicks get to be a month old or a month and a half old, they'd be moving outdoors to a warm, insulated chicken coop, or at least to a crate that's set up in the garage or a workshop or just somewhere that's more outdoorsy uh, than the basement of our own house. And the reason for that is because as chickens grow their feathers, they create an ungodly amount of dust. And to have that in the house is just a nuisance. We've got a, a, an air purifier set up in the basement with a HEPA filter and a UV light. And it's pulling a lot of weight. It is cleaning the air a lot, but there's still a lot of dust being created. Babies, yeah, keep them inside the house. They're a few weeks old. They should be inside the house where it's warm and safe and secure uh, and where you will 
naturally easily see them and pay attention to them but these chickens that we're about to put into this brooder should be outside but we're actually getting a blizzard right now uh we haven't built a coop outdoors we don't have heat in the garage we don't have heat in the workshop so the moral of the story is we are making do with what we have and that's what homesteading is all about i guess if you were to go online and search chicken coop ideas you could very easily overwhelm yourself by by looking at chicken housing that's for sale and also looking for ideas of how to make your own chicken housing because the reality of it is is there is an infinite amount of possibilities when it comes to housing your chickens in a safe and warm way it is amazing to me to see what's for sale it's amazing to me to see what ideas people have had before i mean chickens can live anywhere they can live in a car they can live in a basement they can live in a shed in a garage in a trailer in um in a cave they can live in a greenhouse just add some creativity and you've got a you've got a home or you could of course spend money and i've always been sort of put off by the amount of money that chicken coops cost and so my own my own preference is to make something is to make something for them out of what we've got or my own creativity even if i have to buy supplies but that's just my own priority if you want to buy something that's ready made oh that's great there are there are lots of options out there to either make or to buy so uh this plastic that i'm putting in the bottom right now uh this was left over from when we painted the house when we first bought the house we bought this and used it as drop cloth if you're looking for chicken housing ideas just don't get overwhelmed it is so easy to get overwhelmed um, trying to decide, you know, what's the best way to house chickens. Look, chickens don't care. Chickens will live anywhere. Chickens, chickens will make anything their home. It doesn't have to be cute. It doesn't have to be um, aesthetically pleasing. They don't care. They just need daylight. They need protection from predators. They need warmth when it's cold. Uh, something to break the wind. My natural tendency is to spend too much time researching what's best and then i get so hung up on well how many chickens per square feet how many nesting boxes per chicken how big is the roost going to be how long how many how many how many acres of whatever what do i make it out of is it tall is it is it tall enough is it short enough is it wide enough well, maybe we should buy nesting boxes and bolt them in. No, maybe I should make my own. Well, maybe they should be an inch bigger. Maybe they should be an inch smaller. And it's just so easy to fuss over the details until you make yourself sick. And to be honest, it really doesn't matter. These chickens will make do with whatever you give them. Um, they, they don't need something fancy. They don't need a lot of space. They just need to be safe and secure. And in our case, we are going to give them a nice big run when they live outdoors. So the coop is less of a priority uh, than if they're going to be in the coop constantly. But our chickens will be free range. They'll have a coop to spend the night in and some bars to, to roost on at night, and some nesting boxes to lay eggs in. But I had to stop myself because I was really sort of obsessing over all the different options and, and combinations and what's best well sometimes what's best is who cares the chickens aren't going to care cardboard that we had just stockpiled um this cardboard is just a base layer we're going to put sawdust on top of it and when we're done the sawdust and the cardboard will get dumped in our compost pile and it will help our flowers and our vegetables in the future. Trying not to put anything sharp. So if there's a cardboard box with a staple in it, I'll make sure the staple's out. Um, try not to put too much plastic tape in there. And this is when I made a realization that the plastic is too tight. And so when I put that cardboard in, it kind of made a hammock out of the plastic which is probably okay, except that it reduced the square footage inside substantially. So 
So now I had to undo. And when I when I put that plastic in, I thought that we had a surplus of plastic. But now that I'm adjusting it, I'm realizing that I have just barely enough plastic side to side. But it's all good. It's all good. Worst case scenario is maybe I'd have to move that board to staple the plastic onto. Uh, the sawdust that I'm going to put in this is um, actually just sawdust from my friend Bill. Um, in his garage, he was making something, and when he was done, he swept up all the sawdust, put it in a barrel, and gave it to us. You could, of course, buy some wood shavings, uh, which we do a lot when we don't have our own on hand. Um, sometimes we use shredded paper. That works fine in our coop. There's really no industry standard, if you will. You just sort of use what you have kicking about. But all of this is gonna get saved and reused one way or another. The dog crate, obviously when we're done, we'll clean it, fold it back up, put it back in a pile. Uh, the wood, take the zip ties out of it, we'll save it for some day. Uh, the, the cardboard and the manure and the shavings that are going in the bottom, put that in our compost pile and we'll use that. So it all gets reused. All right, so I'm back in the basement and I started filming this video of making a dog crate into a chicken brooder. And then a lot happened. We got this nasty snowstorm, which I think I'm gonna make a video about. And um, then um, a few days later, I got COVID. So I've been sort of out of commission for a little while. Um, but in the meantime, what I didn't film is uh, my finishing touches to my experimental chicken brooder in the basement. Um, so this is what I ended up doing. Um, I made a top out of, um, this is a big square from some kind of a shipping container. We got a whole stack of them. Uh, they were on top of a pile of pallets behind an old mill building. So. Um, so we uh, wanted the free wood from the pallets, but we saw these and we we're like, these could be something. And we have a whole bunch of them, maybe 20 of them. So I used one of them, but it wasn't quite wide enough. So I used some, some more free pallet wood um, and I just, I just screwed it in. I didn't even have to cut it. I just um, screwed a couple pieces going that way. And then that allowed me to screw a couple pieces going this way. Um, that way the birds can't get out, the cat can't get in, kind of win-win. Also, I just grabbed a piece of chicken wire that we had in the garage um, and just stapled it down. Bada bing, bada boom, we have a chicken brooder. And there they are. Hey girls. Hey girls, how are you doing? What are you doing in there? Cheep, 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 cheep. And um, to make it open, I, once I got it in here, I realized, man, this thing's kind of heavy. So what I did is, I just made a hinge on it just by putting another piece of leftover, um, I don't know, that is a, a two by three or something leftover wood. Looks like it's been left outside for a while, but perfect for this kind of job. And uh, so I put a rope on it. Now our basement came with this weird chain thing. I don't know what they used to hang down here. Probably don't wanna know. And so I just stuck a rope on it. So you can pull it open, you can latch it open just by using a screw, no big deal, nothing intelligent. And that'll hold it open so you can do your business in there, clean up after these little rascals. So, and that's when the chicken jumps out. And there you go. Um, these girls have been in here for, I don't know, two weeks now, and they're doing fine. That made room for these little buggers. Oh, I gotta get you some water. They are in the peck and play. Uh, we got a dozen of them, and uh, these are going to be our egg layers. They're going to outgrow this space pretty quick, but I hope that springtime is just around the corner, and so springtime will mean that we can build a coop outside. But for now, here we are in our basement, making dust.